Well, hello there, person. Let's check out what's new. Making the game Wraithbinder. This, uh, this last session of development has been all about completing this tutorial slash training mode. I'm calling it training mode because uh, I don't want this... Right now, this is playing out as sort of a sequence of events. Um, and these are just sort of all stations where at each station you learn something else. And the whole purpose of me doing these as a stations so far um, is that I just wanted to get this all complete. I wanted this to be um, finished as far as just being, you know, like all of this different steps, the things that you would want to learn as as a player, you can learn. And um, But eventually what I, my goal for this is to make this more integrated into the world so uh maybe on aboard your ship there's a simulator you can go into and you can experience all this or maybe this is or like sort of like a, a whole bunch of different missions you can go on to learn these things or maybe uh at the public dock there's um a dojo or something like that where you can go and learn from a master or something like that but uh for now we've got everything in place so that um so that this what is pff, you can consider it complete so um and this is kind of neat here where i've uh, developed like these uh these trigger points so what happened right here at this point right here was that uh i had to get the shield ability before these spans would appear and that's all accomplished via a trigger block so there's actually an object called the trigger and it's sitting there and it detects when the player has gained the shield ability, and then when that happens, it raises those blocks and you can get past this. This is also a trigger, but it's a different type of trigger where it uh, causes the guardian to explode once you've used your shield. So, and then the instructions are there the whole time while you're near the trigger, it's got this, these, uh, the description on the screen is telling you what to do. So, um, some other goals for this, um, for this training mode was I wanted you to be able to exit anytime so you can always exit this uh, uh, at any any point during this whole training mode you can exit and there's no penalty there's no punishment at all for doing that um, so as a player you can feel like you're not stuck you know you're not forced to do this too and at the beginning well, um, I'll show this in a second but um, when you first start up Wraithbinder um, it's it starts you in it, the first selection is training mode, but you can choose to just skip training mode if you want. You can you don't have to do training mode first. Um, you can do battle, jump straight into battle, um, or team mode, or even practice. So there's now four different modes you can play at the beginning. There's uh, this training mode. There is uh, battle, regular battle where um, the last man standing wins, um, and then there is. Uh, teams mode where you start off on teams and then there's also practice mode where you can just kind of mess around and um, practice using all the abilities so this is kind of how it's all playing out so far the, we look at the map oh we don't have the map yet let's get the skybot here and we'll finish uh, we'll finish this to this training I almost call it a tutorial again. I don't want to call it a tutorial because I hate tutorials myself. I always skip over them. I'm always trying pressing the buttons as fast as I can to get through them. So that's that my kind of my goals for this were to make it feel like it's not actually a tutorial. Um, and to do that, uh, I started making items. So like I was like, oh cool. What if, what if instead of um, what if you got actually you actually picked up the health bar or what if you actually picked up your experience bar and that was kind of more fun and so the, the way this plays out it's really not trying to force you into anything it's not trying to be too hand holding either so i don't know there i had some goals for this but i really think it's going to be a lot more fun once it's integrated into the world whether that's a simulation aboard your ship or whether it's a dojo or something like that So this is where we're getting towards the end of the training mode, and we're going to battle, um, battle against one other player here. 
We'll even have a boomerang. So at this point, we've kind of learned all the basics. We've got um, we've got our abilities. We've a few basic abilities. And ooh. this guy's come on, guy. Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we've learned all the basics basically in this in in this training mode, and um, for for my for me, this is really great to have this finished because as a developer now I can go on and move on to other stuff, and uh, and also um, it's really just feels good to have this sort of implemented because lots of players were requesting this during the alpha test. Uh, where people were like, I don't know what the heck's going on. I don't know what abilities to use. I don't know. I don't have any clue. So that's really what this is all about: is teaching those players that need it. Um, so, and normally as a player, you would get to this light menu and you would you would level up right away. I've I've already maxed out my level for those characters. So that's why I don't have any light points. But as a as a new player, you would get through this. You would you would experience that victory right there, and then you would get to some light points. You would be able to invest in your character a little bit. So you're kind of walking through all the steps of a PvP match, right? You're battling another character, you're getting light points, you're upgrading your character, and then once you're done, you go back to the main menu. So and this is what I was saying about the main menu, where you've got the choice to you know, we start off this way, where there where so the first time you play Wraithbinder, it goes to this, it goes to your first choice is training mode. But you can switch to battle, team battle, or practice. You can do any one of those. And um, there's no penalty or what whatsoever. You you never have to play the training mode if you don't want to. So um, let's look at some of the actual uh, art and code behind all this. Um, I actually created a. Um, so far with Wraithbinder, I had I had been creating maps completely procedurally. So it was all based in code. Lots of math. Lots of abs. Lots of. Um, I say abs, but I mean absolute values. Let's check it out, like what I'm talking about here. Set training block. Actually, let's do set uh, battle block. Right? See all these abses, abs calls, and stuff like that? This is all just mathematics. Like the absolute value of x is less than 3. You know, that kind of stuff here. Let's do put a mender here. So all this stuff is, is creating an entire world with mathematics. That's basically what's going on there. Uh, but with the train, with the uh, with the training mode, what I did was I created a, um, a different type of. I loaded a map via data, so this is the actual map of all the objects in the uh, training arena. And you can see here B1 stands for base one. Uh, these P's are little pillars. I1 stands for item one. The W's are walls. The X's are also walls. T2. All the T's are things, so that's this is thing number one. Uh, here's thing, or sorry, that's thing number two. Here's thing number one, um, and it goes on. Here's thing number four. The S's are signs, so this is sign number two, sign number three is up here, and so on. And then there's also gates. So gates are the things I was talking about where it detects if a certain condition has been achieved, and then it opens up uh, some some a bridge or opens a, opens up the world somehow uh, once you've triggered that that thing to happen so that's and then right here at the end we've got this whole like arena where you fight the enemy this is b2 base 2 where the player 2 will will uh, gets created and in this training map there's only two players there's the player 1 and then the the bot for player 2 uh, so there you have it. That's kind of like the, the art behind it. And I, what my plans are for this is to create um, a map system where I can... Right now, I've, I've got the whole battle world. Like, if we, we load straight into uh, mode or in mode battle, skip menu. Yeah, this will work. So, um, if we load right here into battle mode, uh, we'll have a world that's completely procedurally generated. But what I'd like to do... Let's run around a little bit so you can see more of the map. There we go. So what I'd like to do though is to make this load via data and then use some procedural techniques to make it a little more random. So um, 
so maybe I can take this data, right, and uh, and sort of have like a general layout, like maybe maybe uh, for that map that we were just looking at, I would lay out where the bases are, where the chests are, where the switch the switches are and the gates and things like that. But then the paths would all be procedurally generated. So it would be like, mm, I need to connect these dots. Let's connect all these dots. So the procedural at, like uh, g world generator would kind of take a general layout from the map and then sort of make it and uh, make it unique and fun and different every time uh, using some procedural techniques. So kind of a combination of data and procedural techniques to create um, endless variation with your worlds, but yet you still sort of have a, um, a sort of connected sort of underground framework that's sort of linking it all because all the bases are going to be pretty much in the same position. So I think it's going to be really fun once that once that all gets done. And um, and then I've also got this kind of set up so far, so it's going to have multiple layers. Right now I'm really only using one layer, this objects layer. Um, underground I kind of commented it out and kind of referred to the objects layer. So basically, yeah, the only layer that's currently in use right now is objects, but I plan to also add a background layer. And this will look a lot like uh, the, um, like how the uh, objects layer does. I just, this is just kind of because I, these are small pieces of data right now because I had originally planned to make them smaller. And then I just kind of expanded it all with objects because I was like, dude, I need to have I need to have numbers next to all these. And that's why all these are two characters. And um, anyways, eventually there will be a height map. So this will be height. So there will be another uh, whole huge p bit of data here uh, for the height map. So you'll be able to control like, okay, I want the want this part of the world to be higher. Or maybe I want it to be sloped downward in that direction. Or maybe I want there to be sort of like a mountain in the middle. So it will be a height map. Um, there'll be a background sort of layer where you can choose like, okay, I want clouds there. I want um, some tall pillory things there. And then wall types. I'm thinking there'll be a wall type layer where uh, um, you could be like, okay, I want the walls here to be sky or I want the walls there to be actual walls, stuff like that. And then maybe there's an above ground layer too where there's like, okay, I want there to be the sort of like a canopy jungle on top of this one. Or maybe there's just a ship top walls over here. Whatever. These are kind of some some things I have planned for later. But so far, once a, once again, um, just using the objects layer so far. So there you have it. Oh, let's look at a little more code. Um, let's look at uh, two things. There's the create block trigger. So this is pretty simple. It just creates a trigger block. And that's what I was talking about where it, you got the shield ability and then it opened up the bridge. So that, that it starts with this creating a trigger, which is a, um, simply just a, an entity that has uh, an empty render component. So it's not, you're not able to see anything, but it does make some sounds. So there's a sound. And then there's also just a collision. So this is a big sized uh, collision entity with only the category trigger. And so the trigger works in the move system. There's this thing called trigger entity where um, when the player steps on something, um, and since it's such a huge, big trigger thing, they can step on it from really far away, then it triggers uh, triggers the entity, and then so there's all this like checking to see what entity we're triggering here, and here's where it triggers the, the, um, the trigger, <laughs> triggers the trigger, and then it calls world trigger. So, um, a world trigger, that's where I was talk talking about, uh, it has conditions. And uh, here we've got some trigger, like so this is the shield one right here. So trigger case, it's got an integer representing which, which trigger it is. Um, this is its condition. So if the player E, that's entity E, um, if the player's input component has the ability shield, so that's what that's saying right there, um, then that triggers that case. And this is what it does until it has, you've triggered that, it announces the level up. And then these are like, an, so this is basically putting a, that message on the screen saying, hey, press the W button to level up your character because otherwise I'm just going to keep telling you that until you do it. So that's uh, that's kind of how it helps the character to, or the player to know what to do when, they, when they're near these triggers. So that's all. That's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching this video. And i um, super excited to have this tutorial, uh, sorry, training mode complete at least
mostly complete. We'll get it to where it's really fun, and then it'll be super complete. Yeah? All right. Catch you on the next one.